Hello. I'm making a pusher so that I can push the uh, universal joints out of the drive shaft for my uh, vehicle uh, using the arbor press. Okay, let's get started. Um, I just took a uh, mill bit up both sides, so both sides should be parallel. So what I was going to do next is uh, put these uh, little radiuses here on the end here. So I was just going to plunge a uh, 5 8 inch uh, mill cutter into the ends of these. So I'm going to stand this up. And what I'm going to do just to set the end of this is I'm going to put a one two three block here, push it onto that and then snug it down. So that way it should be the same both sides. There's one thousandths before not pop and there's right on pop. So there you go. So that's set for zero. <coughs> so let me go to zero. Let me bring it over 375 thousandths. 75. So now I'm going to lock it sideways. And what I'm going to do is wait for it to pop. And then since I'm going that way, I'm actually take out the backlash and start turning the other direction until the pop just comes out. Right there. And I was going to send that for a hundred thousandths. I'm a hundred thousandths off the corner that I want to be, and I want to take it 250 thousandths off that corner. <coughs> so let me just take it 100 already by default, 210, 20, 30, 40, 50. Lock that. So right now, this is exactly where I want it. So let me shut things down. And uh, change out the milk cutter. I have everything locked up here. And uh, let's see, I'm going to go in 1.1 inches. Let me just uh, plus. So let me just get a marker and mark that. Okay, power on in the proper direction. Okay, spending way too much time on that. And let me just bring it up. Again, this is just pushing out a unit joint on a rusty axe or drive shaft. So I'm probably going way overkill on this as it is. Years ago. Okay, make sure I'm forward and crank it up. That's how far up it's going to go. That's where I'm going to drill that hole. And that's where I was going to drill that hole. This is where the line's going to be. That is a little bit better. I can get in a little deeper. I'm 
my old drill press, I got rid of it without a single hole in that table. Let me look at the camera and make sure I'm getting something good. Reason. <coughs> oh. The end is near. Wow. That was fun. Oh, and this is Oatley's dark sulfur cutting oil. That's what I use for metal, for steel. And there you go, holes are drilled. Okay, let's cut it along the lines. Just shy of the lines. What I was going to do now is just use four nuts as a standoff, so that way I can get this thing against the table. If I grabbed it in the vise, uh, I'd only be holding it on one side. Okay, this is the one I'm going to lock. The rest of these are just kind of there. I'm just putting them finger tight. Let's sweep this. And I'm going nuts. I could have stopped two turns ago. That zero all the way across there. me screwing up every time. It's good enough. Well here's the finished product. Um, came out pretty well. Um, uh, I was surprised how well I did with just scribing the lines and just trying to follow them. Again this, this isn't going on the space shuttle but you know I thought that was pretty accurate. So uh, it'll do what I need to do. There's only two boo-boos on here. Uh, one was me and the other was me too but uh, just not planning. Uh, this, I actually, right here, I don't know if you can see that, I actually turned the crank the wrong way. Uh, like I said, I was a little annoyed. I thought about going across, and I said, you know what, it was, it was done. I just left it like that. This was another thing, actually. Uh, uh, what I'd done was, uh, when I came down to one side, I touched, brought it out, brought it over, and then cut. And I was doing conventional milling. Actually, it was on this side. 
was doing conventional milling down here and what happened is when it got down to the end here even though I had the table locked the bit grabbed down here and then started drilling climb milling and just driving like a tire just pushed the uh, table this way slightly uh, because I had the leech screw preload, uh, preloaded in this direction. So in the future what I was going to do on this table, uh, on this mill, is uh, if I want to come over 10, I'm going to come over say 30 and then back up to 10 so that way it's preloaded that way. So that way if I mill a corner, even with the table locked, it shouldn't grab and pull in. So, and then when I go to this one, I had the same issue. Like I said, I also turned the knob the wrong way to make it worse, but it did do that as well. So what I imagine what I would do is after I locked the table, I would take the, the, uh, the, the uh, back play out of the uh, lead screw so it's pushing that way before I go across so it can't grab and pull. So I have a little animation I was going to show on what happened uh, just, just to show. But anyway, this will work. Um, if you have an arbor press, you know, a really nice way to do universal joints is they sell a kit. It's hundreds and hundreds of dollars. This is kind of my, my cheap duplicate. Is this? I'm not going to use a socket. Basically, you take a plate with something raised on it with a hole that goes all the way through, which I'm going to make in the next video. And uh, you would set the, uh, of course, the universal joint over that in the drive shaft, so that's your accepting cup. And then what you do is you put this on the trunnions, or in the case that I'm doing a double card end, uh, actually on the the ears on the drive shaft and then you push so that way it pushes the ears out and there's no chance of bending the ears because uh, you're putting a direct force the load path is through this trunnion down here straight through that which you're backing so there's no chance of bending those ears and you know the other thing is I have an arbor press it's kind of neat uh, you know slowly build up tools that you can do so anyway the measurements on this I did to match my Jeep I don't know if I would need another size for a different vehicle. Uh, I know you can buy one of these for GM for like 40, 50 bucks. Um, this just cost me some time and a 50 cents worth of metal or whatever that is. So, and it was a fun project, even though I did have a little boo here. Well, anyway, I was going to do another video on making the next part, which is not going to be this, but it'll be something similar. Um, and then I'm going to uh, do a video of the U-joint replacement on my, uh, G Grand Cherokee, it has double cardan up front, and then just a regular drive shaft in the back. So uh, th that should be interesting as well. Well, thank you for watching, and you guys have a great day. Bye.